Feels good. Feels good. And welcome to the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the only point of your normally exciting existence, but there is everything, there's something every week that makes it just a little bit more special, and that's a Life According to Larry's show. My name is Larry Hoffman, and uh, it's it's a weird show today. For one thing, I have this camera here, but we're just gonna we're just gonna pretend the camera is our friend. It's, that's right, the Life According to Larry show of the Inner Space Weekend Conspiracy. We've been having lots of problems with the squiggly wiggly this week. We need to call for the electric bear, kids, and it's the electric bear that's gonna lead the squiggly wiggly on out. But see, the only thing about the electric bear is. You still have that problem with John Tesh. See, the electric bear works for the squiggly wiggly, but when you're talking about John Tesh, you're dealing with a strong, powerful alien. And we, there's a few jilted souls out there that depend on the, the, the pure power of the psychedelia of the life according to Larry Show. Feels a good, kids. Bye bye on this edition of Scrock in Your Batau, we explore the multimedia empire that lavish Larry Hoffman has created through his radio program and his independent record label. Innocent outlets for creative ideas or the diabolical plot of a madman bent on corrupting the youth of America? You decide. This week on Scrock in Your Batau. The year was 1891 or 1991. No one can really be sure. A student at Henry Ford Community College in Dearborn joined the radio station, and the rest, as they say, is history. The response to the Life According to Larry show was indeed divided. Many were disturbed by the rantings of the latest hip DJ, and yet others tuned in religiously to their favorite Friday night psychedelic rock show. I think what I like best about the Life According to Larry show is that uh, he talks way too much, and uh, you know he does senseless rambling for, for no less than 10 or 15 minutes at a time, and you know, it's like they say in the, in, in, in the field of radio, you know, it's, it's the gift of gab, which Larry no doubt has. With the success of the Life According to Larry show, Burnt Hair Records was created. With Burnt Hair, Larry was able to send his message beyond the Dearborn, Detroit area, thus influencing thousands, if not millions, of people, including those overseas. Of course, with him being you know, the man behind Burnt Hair Records, He's a big pusher of the local scene. Um, you know, bands like Wendy and Carl, and uh, also bands that aren't from around here like Grimble Grumble and uh, Lost in Translation and stuff like that. The reason I joined WHFR was because I was hanging out in school for uh, about a year. I wasn't doing much, and I was in the theater program, and I was having fun doing that. But I was really into the music, and I was always into my record collection and doing stuff like that. So. Uh, and I always listen to the radio station. I listened to the radio station before, and so I joined up, and immediately I, I decided I changed my major. I changed everything to communications. Uh, I wasn't a theater major anymore. I was putting everything into that, and uh, I got the show. And when I got, you know, I had everything planned, what it was going to be, the life according to Larry's show. And uh, I mean, even two or three years before, I was talking what the life according to Larry's show is. I just never actually did it, and uh, because. I said, you know, you're, you're uncertain for a while. But then when I figured out what I wanted to do, it was all Life According to Larry's show. Of course, and then that transcended into Burnt Hair Records, and then it was Burnt Hair Records, but it was all like, it's like a step, you know? It's like Life According to Larry's show first, and then Burnt Hair Records, and then like whatever else I'm gonna do, you know? Because radio is, radio is the key, but it's all about the music, you know? <laughs> Through the radio program and his label, he is able to communicate with many far and wide. Some have even adopted many of the slang words he uses on his radio show. Many in the Dearborn area can hear these words in their everyday lives. It has caused our family a lot of problems. Let me tell you, how would you like to sit down to the dinner table and your kids are ranting and raving about the squiggly wigglies? What the fuck is that all about? I'm telling you, it has really done a lot of damage to our family's social life. What the hell does we we mean anyway? I have no idea. Despite the large following of the show and label, there has been an organization that has formed to counterattack Larry's activities, the Anti-Hoffman Institute. The Anti-Hoffman Inc. or something, or Anti-Hoffman something. They're an organization, that, from what I know, it's only two people, and I, I guess they go by the names of Brother Golden, I believe, because he, he always used to say, you take the L and you get God, and Brother Orville was the other one. They've, they've been 
spotted, and I, I've had witnesses of them actually getting in the faces of Life According to Larry Show fans, burnt hair fans, and uh, I had a big barbecue one time, and it was like the fourth one or something along those lines, and uh, we had bands outside and everything, or bands inside. They're outside with this clearly slanderous flyer uh, stating all kinds of, I mean, nothing of it, you know, nothing really true, but they, you know, they're intimidated, obviously. Like, for example, one, one of the things that it's been stated that Mr. Hoffman is for the legalization of murder. And they come to me, and uh, I go to offer them food to be nice. I was like, would you like some chicken? And they're like, we don't need your evil chicken cooked by the fire of, the, of hell or something like that. And I'm like, you know, I, I'm put off by this, and I'm, I'm miffed and confused. And they have this video camera on me. They say, it's been stated that you're for the legalization of murder. And I'm like, man, I'm for feelings of good. One thing is certain, burnt hair records in the Life According to Larry show are forces to be reckoned with. Some will support and join Larry's cultural crusade, while others will try to bring it down. Whichever side you fall on, Larry himself wishes that you feel the good wherever you land. We leave you with some final words from the man himself. It's all about the kids and feeling the good. As you grow older, you must remain a kid. They've said, grow up. Well, why should I grow up? And why should you grow up? I'm asking you to take my hand, proverbially, through the radio or any other media that I can reach you because I'm going to reach every single one and I'm going to get to every single bit of media and I'm going to reach you and I'm going to ask you to become a part of this legacy, this empire, this whatever the hell you want to call it that we have and it's the life according to Larry's show but it's going to move past that, you see? We're at that millennium point. When the Life According to Larry show ends on the year 2000, I want you to be there with me. I want you to bring this to new heights. I want the Life According to Larry show to transcend normal physical boundaries. We're talking Life According to Larry show, pure energy, 19, 2000, wherever, and there, time will mean nothing. And you can join in this. You've heard that talk about people joining the internet, all that crap, well, that's ridiculous. Because what we have here in the Life According to Larry show is going to make that seem weak. Because when the Life According to Larry show 2000 millennium pure energy moment comes, you're going to convert to pure energy as well. Or maybe not, but you're going to feel the good. And you'll watch me. You know, people say this has to do with like other figures, but the original Larry didn't get enough, enough exposure. This is where it's all about. This is my moment, and I'm asking you. The kids. I don't care how old you are, you're a kid to me. I don't care, I don't care if you live most of your life, you're a kid to me. And you don't have to grow up, and we will conquer everything, and we're going to do it through little media, and we're going to take what they don't have. Like, when their digital comes, we'll take over the analog, and we will rule this society. You and me! But you have to feel the good. That's the only stipulation. Feels the good. Come with me and feels the good.